みなさんこんにちはみなさんこんにちは今日国際キリスト教大学の夏季講師に聞いて話したいと思います<笑><笑> So Rebecca and I just got back to the States from taking this intensive six week summer program in ICU which is also known as International Christian University or 国際キリスト教大学 We just thought that this, we wanted to make a video.、Um, hopefully, this will help people who are looking at study abroad programs over the summer and. More specifically, ICU. More specifically, ICU. So, we thought we wanted to give more insight into the program because there really isn't anything out there about it, besides the fact that it's six weeks intensive and it's in Japan. So, hopefully, this、uh, video will help those who are looking at it and、um, maybe. If this isn't really what you're looking at, you can find something that will fit your needs better. This program is really good for people who are planning on using Japanese within their career.、Um, it re- you go through about like a year's worth of material within six weeks, so it definitely does help you a lot.、Um, so, before you even go to ICU, you have to apply to ICU. You have to get a letter of recommendation、yeah. from a teacher. A professor. Yeah. And then. It doesn't have to be your Japanese professor.、Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have to send in your transcript. And it has to be a physical copy of your transcript. It has to be the original. Yeah. And then yeah. you also send in a picture of yourself that's like sort of like passport photo size. And that's for your ID card. So、yeah. make sure you choose a good picture. And then you have to write、um, an why application you go, letter. Yeah. Like why you want to go. So you have to like be able to yeah. apply. Yeah. Apply it to why, yourself. Yeah. You can. Say whatever you want, whatever. Yeah, but it has to be something I feel like that's more personal. They accept about 100 students.、Mm. Um, so I think, yeah, so once they read through everything, they will send you an email. Yeah, and, telling you if you got in or not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.、Um, so before you start your classes, you have to, everybody has to take the placement exam.、Mm-hmm. Um, well, except for if you're in C1. They start their classes on the day everybody else takes their placement exam.、Mm-hmm. There's three sections, if I remember correctly. One is writing, one is grammar, and one is kanji. There's a prompt with the、mm-hmm. writing. You don't get to know it beforehand. Right.、Um, you basically like, read it as you take the test. Grammar section is multiple choice. Writing, you get like, a piece of paper and you just、mm-hmm. have to write it.、Um, and then、uh, kanji was also multiple choice. And the multiple choice was on like, Google. Like one of those Google survey types of multiple choice things. And you also have to fill in your answer on、right. a piece of paper. And so before you go in, you like everyone's together and you do get this like sheet and you go together in groups. Yeah, yeah the placement exam is just to see which level you're supposed、right. to be at. And on the catalog, it also said that once you, you're placed in a class, that's fixed. But the first couple of days, that's really when, you know, You can test out the classes. Right, and, and then it, professors、yeah. may like bump you up, they may bump you down. Yeah,、um, yeah so, so there are、so、a total of eight levels starting from C1, as I mentioned before, and then all the way to the special Japanese level, which is, I guess, technically C8.、Um, so, C1, where it's basically people who have never really studied Japanese and are still、um, struggling with like, the basics of like, hiragana or katakana and even like, conjugations.、Mm-hmm. And then Um, so, C2, I was in C2, and that's basically sort of the equivalent of like first year Japanese at a college level.、Um, you learn a lot of new vocab and、uh, grammar,、um, but they don't really teach you like hiragana or katakana, so you kind of have to have already have known that before. And、um, generally, the course, the stuff that I learned was more useful for like daily life. And like conversational usage. So the C3 and C4, I don't really have too much knowledge about that, but it's sort of, I guess, equivalent to like second year Japanese at the college level. Also, C4, it's mainly like for people who have acquired a lot of textbook knowledge, but they're still working on trying to、uh, apply that to you know, regular conversations. So they're not quite able to hold long conversations. And so they're trying to like apply it. So I was in C5, and this is equivalent to third year Japanese. In terms of kanji, oh no, no, in terms of bunpo, it's about the end of second year Japanese to third year Japanese. But in terms of kanji and like 
vocab, it's more like third year Japanese to fourth year Japanese. Um, so this class is mainly for people who are really strong at listening. Uh, they know a substantial amount of kanji and tango, and they're able to express their ideas, they're able to converse with natives and get their ideas across, but with grammatical errors and it may not sound very fluent and natural but they're still able to get what they want to say across. There's a focus on being able to con uh, converse in a more academic setting which can be more challenging just because a lot of the words that you learn you just don't hear colloquially very often so just this whole repetition it's you, you just don't hear it every day which can be pretty challenging. Yeah and, and then at this point you're just not provided any kunyomi or onyomi so you're just expected to know the kanji, which can be pretty daunting. <laughs> People at this point are pretty fluent and they are able to speak pretty naturally um, and speak with very minimal problems. Special Japanese is for people who grew up speaking Japanese. Uh, they just want to work on writing and speaking. I think in this class there are only three people, um, so it's very small. Okay, so coursework in um, C2 um basically almost every single day we had a quiz and every day it would either be a bumpo slash vocab quiz or a kanji quiz so they would alternate um and then there was also every like two days or so we would have the lesson um like kanji and bumpo homework that we had to hand in so that was like on a daily like sort of routine that we always had and then there was um, also, we didn't have as many like writing um, essays that we had to do. The we only sakubun. had, yeah, sakubun. Yeah. We only had like two, two, I think. No, actually we had three, but then they canceled one, I think. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> We're too lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, uh, and then in class, um, the classes were divided into three periods. So um, for us, we I, my class had four teachers, so then sometimes they would also, because we had so many people in our class, they would divide the class into like smaller sections, so then each teacher could focus a little bit more on each student. Sometimes in course, we would have like a grammar section, and then the next section would be like a speaking section, and then sometimes they would also have like a writing section, and so like, I don't know if just depending on like how your teachers organize the course or the day, like it can be different. But um, so yeah, that's basically what we did. Yeah, so in C5, we did a lot of sakabun writing. Um, and this basically, this is kind of what we did. So we would just write about a certain topic. What kind of topics did you write about? Um, like artificial <laughs> intelligence. Um, Jinko Chino, and uh, like technology and, and um, the more advanced topics, I guess. So, and then we learned, we did a lot of kanji. This was our textbook, and they 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 made it themselves. So we had like a bunch of kanji that we had to learn. Um, we had to go through about twenty words per week, and then also with tango, there were about fifty tango that we had to go uh, learn per week. And then with bumpo and like bumpo and grammar, uh, we had to learn about fifteen grammar expressions. So it's it's quite a, it's quite a workload, um, but it's it's doable. And then in our class in particular, I think from C four up, you do have debates. Yeah, for our debate, we just kind of debated whether you know technology is good or bad so yeah we did that and then we have a ton of hapyo or presentations it's only about two minutes it's it's not bad but it's considering the fact that you only have one night or so to prepare it is kind of daunting but it's it's doable um and then you yeah like rebecca said you should expect a lot of quizzes, mm, quizzes. um yeah but you you also have a midterm and then a final and there's also everybody has to do one last presentation i think right yeah i think all the courses have to do it yeah for me it was like but you don't have to present in front of the entire yeah you only program. present in front of your own in front of your own class. class yeah so for my class it was like pick a place in japan that you really want to go and explain like what you can do and like different sites to see mm -hmm. stuff like that and for you yeah it was just basically similar like we, we we had to go to a public 
place and then just talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um, so for the dorm, I'm sure you're all very curious about the dorm. The dorm. Um, the dorm, the house that we were in was called the Zelkova house mm -hmm. in English. In uh, Japanese, it's Keaki dorm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so basically this is where like everyone in the ICU summer program lives. It's very nice and modern and it has three total of three floors, but we could only use the first two floors. We never went to the third floor. Um, so the first floor is basically all for guys and then the second floor is all for girls. You have to take off your shoes every time you enter the dorm. They're kind of strict on that rule. <laughs> but it's nice. It's, yeah, it's very nice. clean. Yeah, it's very clean. Yeah. And there's like a little cubby for your shoes where you can put um, your and, slippers or yeah, you can put your slippers mm -hmm. or any shoes which they provide. <laughs> yeah, they give you slippers, which is super nice. Yeah, like the airplane slippers, but yeah, yeah they yeah. still provide. They're them. like cheap yeah. quality, but like it's still it's nice that you have some. Yeah, and um, you also have like a dorm father slash dorm mother. Um, Nita Sung was our dorm father. Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Nita Sung. Yeah, so nice, super nice. Super you can nice. talk to him in English or Japanese. He understands mm -hmm. both. Um, very helpful if you need yeah. if you need help with anything. Go to them. Yeah, um, super helpful yeah. for anything. Um, and right. you have to make sure if you're coming back late, you email him. Or if you're not going to be staying at the dorm, that you email him. Because that's like a policy that they have. So if you're going to email nita you have to email him before like 10, I think. Mm -hmm. If you're coming back late or if you're not going to be at the dorm. Um, and then at the dorm, there's also ICU students who are like TAs. Or they live in the dorm and sort of like help you if you have any questions. Um, usually they're sitting in like the front like foyer area mm -hmm. um, and if you have any like questions you can also go to them. I actually like made some friends, so, um, some friends with the ICU students. Yeah, a lot and of they, people make yeah, friends with the ICU students. And they were really helpful for like speaking practice, right, yeah. especially for the exam. Yeah. Yeah, they were really helpful with that. And you can also, if you want to have packages sent or any letters sent, mm -hmm. you can ask um, Nita San the address, Nita the ad address yeah. and you can have it sent to the dorm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. there's also a dorm card that you, like a oh, oh, uh, card that you have to swipe in every time. Mm -hmm. So every time you leave, you have to swipe in, and every time you come back in, you have to swipe it's in. It's like at every door? Yeah, it's like on the so. girls' floor, there's a place where you have to swipe, and at the boys' floor, there's a place where you have to swipe. So it's kind oh. of and annoying. You, it's kind of like annoying just because if you're with somebody and they open up the door yeah you also yeah, it doesn't swipe. function just as like like an opening the door yeah. thing it like basically clocks in when you come in mm -hmm. and clocks when you go come, out yeah yeah so um if you go in without swiping it you're not you can't go to, back in yeah you can't access any of the other doors so you have to go back out yeah and swipe it you can come back anytime but you can't leave after 12 i think mm. so like let's just say you have a flight that's booked at like 1 a.m you have to make sure you leave before 12 or else you can't leave the dorm. I heard stories where like somebody couldn't leave their dorm and they had a flight to catch so they had to crawl out the window. <laughs> That's... Yeah. Wow. So also, uh, I kind of wish that I knew this before, you you do get free laundry which is really nice um, and they also have laundry detergent that summer course students can use. It's also a good idea to... They only have like Three washing machines, three and, washing machines, and three dryers. And three dryers. So it's a good idea to also bring these um, laundry washing bags, so you don't lose your clothes. Right, because people do dump it out. You can also use the drying racks that they have. If the dryers yeah, are so there's a right. huge room. It's kind of like a solarium, but they have like a long rod and stuff like that, so you can hang dry your clothes. And they also provide drying racks in your room. Um, but it's pretty small, so you can't really fit all your clothing. Because right. you have to share it with your roommate, so... Right, but it's so humid in Japan that it takes forever to dry. It takes forever to dry, so yeah. the drying machine is definitely a lifesaver. Yeah. There's also a kitchen on every floor. Right, there's a really nice kitchen on every floor. Um, and so, they, yeah. They provide, like, salt and, like, soy sauce and, and oil. Utensils. Yeah, utensils, plates, whatever, and pots and pans. So you don't have to really yeah. worry about that. In the fridge. Yeah. Um, oh, right. And then there's, like, a fridge. Each wing. So there's, like, an oh, A yeah. wing, B wing, C wing. Each of those wings have Their a... Their own personal fridge. Yeah, their own personal fridge. You can keep food in there. There's also a closet where they have a vacuum cleaner. Oh, and each wing also has their own bathroom. Right, their own nice. bathroom. Yeah. You don't have to worry about having to really share showers. Not share yeah. showers, but like take like wait. wait. Yeah, yeah, you don't, you don't have, have to wait. Um, yeah. and, and there's a lot of toilets, like toilets as well with stalls. 
Yeah, because this are super nice. Yeah, and then also they have dryers there too, hair dryers, so you don't need to bring a hair dryer. Right, hair dryers too. The school also provides pillows, sheets, and blankets, so you don't need to bring any of that. And then you do get assigned a roommate. So mm -hmm. I was really lucky to have an amazing roommate. Um, My roommate was nice too. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So we never really talked too much. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, mm -hmm. oh yeah, in your dorm you get like a desk with a drawer yeah and then you get one closet so i see you does have a gym that summer students can use uh one thing i will say is it's not uh there's no ac they do have fans though and it's very small they have like um elliptical machines they have a treadmill um which is really nice to they use during machines summer. Too. yeah biking machines um they have a weight room yeah there's no wi-fi at least, the, at least the summer students don't have uh, access to Wi-Fi in the gym, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't see. Um, you have to sign in when you go to the gym as well. Right. And then one thing I also should have known is that you have to take, you have to bring indoor shoes to use the gym. Yeah. So clean shoes. Yeah. So yeah, clean shoes. So if you're going, to, if you're planning on using the gym, bring an extra pair of shoes that are clean. And then the <laughs> gym is. I think I don't remember the times, but it's open from like 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah, so it's not a lot of time. It's not a lot of time, yeah. and you can't use it in the morning, which is kind of unfortunate. But it's also closed on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Also, they have the part, the area that you're talking about is like the training area with like all the treadmills and stuff. They have a newer area, which is like a basketball court. That side is air conditioned. Super, super it's nice. Newer, yeah. That one's like brand newly built, but most of the time, if you're planning to go on the treadmill, it's on one of the older buildings, and that doesn't have air conditioning at all. Right. I was kind of disappointed when I found out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they also have um, locker rooms that you can use with like sinks and showers. So in terms of food, you can go to the cafeteria, and the breakfast, lunch, and dinner is actually doesn't come with the tuition, so. A lot, what a lot of people will do, especially during the weekdays, there's there are two 7-Elevens. When you go out through the main gates, you can go right or you can go left. And about 10 minutes walking distance, even less, less than that, yeah, really there are two 7-Elevens. And um, that's where a lot of people go for quick food. And it's really nice because you can just take it back to the dorm, put it in the fridge, and you know eat it later. But It's a lot cheaper than the food at the dining hall. When, if you go to the dining hall, you have to make sure you have cash. And so they have things like, uh, for breakfast, they have sweetbreads and konigiri. And then mm. for lunch and dinner, they have things like curry. Curries, salads. Yeah. Close to 7-Eleven, there's also a grocery store. Um, there's matsuya. a pharmacy. And then there's also a like matsuya, which mm. a lot of college students go to. It's basically like a fast food restaurant where they have... Um, Gyudon. That's their main yeah, thing. Yeah, that's their main thing. Gyudon. They have cut it. Uh, and then you just... Order on the machine. Yeah, order on the if machine ahead of time. That. Yeah. So it's, yeah. yeah. And then also what I noticed a lot of students were doing as well is they would actually cook their own meals mm -hmm. in the kitchen. So for traveling off campus, um, it's, very, it's pretty convenient from ICU. Um, there's a bus that goes directly to two... Um, train stations that are nearby. One of them is called Musashi Sakai and the other one's Mitaka Station. Um, Musashi Sakai is a little bit closer than Mitaka, but they're like basically about the same distance. Um, so usually for there's a lot of things you can do at both stations, but for the most part I went to Musashi Sakai more than Yeah, I feel Mitaka. like a lot of people like I think Musashi yeah. Sakai is a go to for a yeah, lot of people. Yeah, because it's a little bit closer and traveling time is shorter. So at Musashi Sakai, they have a really big grocery store called Ito Yokoto. Yokoto. Ito Yokoto. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So that has a lot of foods um, that you can also buy there. There's a good like shopping mall sort of um, where it has like Loft, Uniqlo, Muji, GU. Like, basically has a lot of stuff that you need or want. There's also like McDonald's and KFC near there. And all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, at Musaka, Musashi Sakai, there's also this place called Musashi no Place. Mm -hmm. And it's this library. Really modern library. Yeah, super that you can, pretty. Yeah. So yeah. if you want to go study there. Study there. Super nice. Yeah. Um, downstairs in the basement, I think there's kind of like an oven place that you can use for yeah. 
like it's like a teenager's like yeah. cave kind of thing. Yeah, it's also um, pretty convenient to get to like Shinjuku, which is more towards the center of Tokyo. Um, from ICU it takes like 40 minutes, including like bus and train. But if it's from if you're going from Misashisake, it's about like 20 minutes or so. Um, and then also another good place to go is Kichijoji, where there's a lot of shopping and restaurants there. It's as like well. three stations over. Two stations. Two stations over. Mm. It's the one right after Mitaka Station. So if you're going from Misashisake, it takes like 10 minutes, but from ICU it's like 23 minutes. So it's really close and that's also a good place if you just want to get off campus go a little bit further right and yeah. go shopping they have so many stores they have like one street full of just like lots and lots of stores and restaurants um also um icu is also pretty close to mount takao not super close but it's like an hour almost two hours away from icu um yeah takao sun's yeah. really pretty it's super pretty um yeah. you can see basically like all of tokyo uh from the top Right. And they have like also good food and uh they have a buffet there. Yeah, buffet there called like Beer Mount. Yeah. Yeah. And they're also known for like their soba there too. Soba. <laughs> yeah. Another yeah. place that's also known for their soba is Jindaiji, um, which is like a temple and they have they're known for their soba and also the black water onsens. This is pretty cool. It's like Yumori no Sato. Yeah. Um, um it, it was really nice. Yeah, it's like thirty minutes away by bus, I believe. Um, technically, it is a walkable distance. Yeah, but we I, walked. Yeah, we walked there, but I wouldn't mm. recommend you walk there because it's so humid. It is. It's hot, yeah. but it's it's nice. You go yeah. through like it. it you can like, go rise. through this like park, this next to this river. Right. We went the long way, so that's why it took longer. Right. Because um, our friend wanted to walk next to the river. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So I see you. There's a there's a great social life. I think. Um, what something that kind of surprised me going in is that. Like, it seemed like everybody knew, like, not everybody, but a lot of people seemed to be well acquainted with each other ahead of time. This is because uh, there's a lot of UC students in this program because ICU has a partnership with um, the UC school system. So you do see a lot of people from California. But, you know, it's very, it's kind of inevitable, inevitable that you, you know, become really close with people in your class um, and then you become pe friends with people, you know, in your wing and stuff like that. So, yeah, you, you became pretty close with your Yeah, class. everybody in yeah. my class was really close. Right. Um, we went out for, like, lunch or dinner Yeah, me together. too. As a class, um, yeah. Even, we were even pretty close with the teachers. We went out with the teachers as well. Um, I don't know if you, you guys didn't really do that, did we you? Really <laughs> um, but we, we ate out as a class, so. Yeah, we always... Um, yeah, we have like we made a group chat for the whole class, mm -hmm. including the teachers, yeah. and we would always like st we're still kind of like talking. Yeah, and I think like a lot of times during this course, it does get so stressful that you really do kind of lean on each other to yeah. just kind of get through and mm -hmm. um, you help each other out. You can do homework together mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So also, there's one time when a bunch of students went to Arachi Hanabi Taikai, which is this really big. Um, Japanese festival, festival, Japanese fireworks festival, mm -hmm. which is a lot of fun. Oh, you also get to talk to a lot of the ICU students. So right. Like, on Wednesdays, there's this language table. Basically, you just go into this like sort of cafe area that they had, and um, they would pair you up with like an ICU student, or sometimes it could be a worker that was there, and then you just talk to them. And they have like a list of questions that they can ask, and then you just. You can also ask them questions as well. Mm -hmm. For my class C five, at least it was mandatory that we went. Mm -hmm. So C three was not mandatory, or C two. C two was not mandatory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, I. But it's a good experience. Yeah, to, it's like, good yeah. to like meet new people. Um, also, for my class, we had like interview homework. So sometimes people would go to the language table to finish the interview homework. Okay, so there's some school supplies that we thought would be helpful to share. Um, first of all, um, I think it's really nice to have... I got this at Loft. It's a gridded whiteboard. Um, and so it's really good for kanji, um, just so you don't waste a lot of paper. Uh, so I, I would recommend... Have whiteboards there, so... Oh, do they? Yeah. But the gridded whiteboards are really nice, yeah. so... I would recommend getting that. And then at Loft, you can also get these erasable pens if you like pens. Um, these are really nice too. And then I would also recommend bringing, because you do get like a lot of 
work like papers and stuff like that i would highly recommend i brought this in from america but you can buy it there and it's just a binder so i would highly yeah, recommend binder is super helpful and also notebook right Note right and then bring your computer yeah computer yeah um so i see there are a lot of really fun cultural activities yeah um, most of them are pretty inexpensive, usually around ten dollars or less. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only really expensive one is like the Studio Ghibli Museum one. That one I think was a little bit over ten. It was, um, I think it was like it was, it was pretty cheap. It was like eleven. But oh, you, right. yeah, I don't I don't really remember the price, but it was pretty cheap for like a museum ticket. I think right. compared to American museums. Um, so there's a whole list of them that they give you in the beginning, bucks, yeah. um, and basically. Some examples. Yeah, so this like, is like the cultural, you yeah. get like a cultural book. program booklet thing, and then there's like a um, calendar with all the dates and all that. Dates yeah. and all the so there's activities like you can Kabuki, do. Kabuki, Studio Ghibli, obviously, that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. And there's like tea ceremony, Japanese cooking, like mm -hmm. all sorts of different um, activities. And uh, there's during the week, there's a room next to your classes where you have to sign up for it. After you sign up, um, you, they give you like a list of the people who are chosen. It's mostly first ser first come first serve, um, and so if you're chosen, then you have to pay the money for the ticket. Um, the cultural programs were all really fun. Yeah, I fun. went to the tea ceremony. That was pretty fun. They had like the tea ceremony club do like a demonstration for us. Um, did you go to Kabuki? Yeah, I went to Kabuki. Uh, we went to the. I forgot what it's called, but it's like the National um, Kabuki Theater or something mm -hmm. like that. It was really nice. It's It was more of a kind of English, not English, but you got the um, translations. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. It was, it was a shorter version, so mm -hmm. it was... Yeah, yeah it was I know. It was like an old. intro to Kabuki. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it was really helpful, I guess. Right. And then I went to Ghibli. Yeah, we, all, we both went to Ghibli. That one was super fun. Um, basically, if you don't know, Mitaka has like this really famous Ghibli museum, so it's right next to ICU. <sighs> Highly recommend going yeah. just because the tickets you have to like book them a month book them. before. Yeah, they're pretty yeah. popular. So the fact that you're able to just get it right in, yeah, is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. It's also fun to like hang out with some of the students that might not be in your class. Right. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. good to like talk to them. Okay, so. We're just going to sum up a little bit about the program. So <laughs> the cons of this taking this program, it's it goes so fast, obviously, but it's not the greatest for memory retention. You do learn a lot, but it's just you're cramming in so much information that it's not great, too great for memory retention. Also, I see you. Everyone speaks English, including the Japanese students. So a lot of times you do kind of end up speaking English to each other outside of class. Mm -hmm. It's on the opposite side of like really famous touristy places. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's pretty far. It's like in one of the suburbs of Tokyo. Right. So but it's I think that's why a lot of people like don't like it, but also really like it just because it's so forested. It's beautiful campus. It's really big. So it's like a good place for studying. As for the pros, um, this program is a really good way to get yourself immersed in Japanese culture while you're learning the language because you are in Japan. Um, it is a pretty good location. Like it's not super close to everything, but right. it is you easy. You see the bus, yeah, go to the train station, and once you want, yeah. yeah, it's like super convenient to get to places. And then for me, um, I thought most of the teachers were really nice and helpful. And if you had any questions, you could just go ask them. Um, email them um, So yeah, I had really good experience with that and then you get the most out of your money for this program like if I remember correctly, it was around like three thousand dollars I think and You get like so much out of this program like plus the cultural programs and The learning materials like if you compare it to some other programs like I'm the only one I can think of is the Middlebury program, like that one, you're not in Japan, you're in Vermont and you're learning Japanese, but like it's not as immersive as this program because you're already, you're in Japanese and this one's cheaper than the Middlebury mm -hmm. one. So I really think this program can help anybody who really is passionate about Japanese and wants to learn about um, Japanese culture or even Japan. So 
I do really recommend this program for anybody who's interested. Right. And both of us had really good Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. hopefully this video helped and we wish you the best of luck whether you are planning on actually going to ICU or if you're just looking around and yeah. Jane!